All right. Thank you, everybody. And welcome to Are You Ready to Scale You? It's my pleasure to welcome Jamie Rogers, who uh, I've had the honor of supporting me as my virtual assistant. She also supports the amazing and wonderful Louisa Milano. And for those of you who know, the incredible JP Morgan, as well as others that I don't even know about. So she's here to share with us some of her knowledge, gain supporting uh, some world-class coaches and help you guys get ready to scale yourself. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Jamie. You can share your screen and we'll rock and roll. Awesome. Thank you so much, Townsend. Thank you all for being here and taking some time to be with me. I know you guys are busy entrepreneurs. Um, for those of you who do not know me, I'm Jamie Rogers. I am married to the incredibly talented, handsome, cherishing, loving husband, Vladimir. Um, we have no kids and three dogs on purpose. And we I'm originally from Los Angeles, and I currently live in the Midwest in Iowa. And um, I am a champion virtual assistant. And I serve purpose-driven entrepreneurs by taking these soul-sucking things off their plate and getting them back into their zone of genius. So um, I know you guys are here for, um, you're interested in scaling your business. So I'm here to tell you about the five truths that no one tells you about hiring a virtual assistant. So I'm going to share my screen here. And um, everyone can hear me, yeah? Beautiful. And everyone can see? Beautiful. All right. I'm going to hide my floating controls. I don't need those guys. And, all right. So the uh, five truths that no one tells you about hiring a virtual assistant. Let's go. And there we go. Okay. Truth number one. You must set appropriate expectations. So there are reasonable and unreasonable expectations. Let's go over those. Uh, so reasonable. Uh, virtual assistants can help you with a wide range of tasks. So yes, we can handle administrative work, social media management, customer service, marketing. For Townsend, I am his community manager. Um, we can free up your time so that you can have the access to handle the most important parts of your business. And only you would know that, right? So um, another reasonable expectation is that virtual assistance can be a cost-effective way to scale your business. So when you hire a virtual assistant, you don't have to have a, um, an office space you don't even provide a salary. You can just hire them part-time or full-time depending on your needs. And uh, another reasonable expectation is that virtual assistants can be a valuable asset to your team. So we can bring new skills and uh, new perspectives to your business and we can help you achieve your goals faster and more efficiently. So I had a client who um, will be putting out a sub stack and they want to record the Substack in in an audio version, so you know those who are who can't read or you know can't see or whatever, um, they can still hear the Substack. And they requested that I record it for them. And I said, well, you know, I'm currently listening to an audiobook of someone who's a celebrity, and they have someone else reading it for them. And I'm it's almost like a disconnect when you're listening to one person reading it when you know who wrote the book. Whereas like, let's say the Will Smith, I don't know if you guys have read or listened to the Will Smith audiobook, but it's him and you can hear like his trials, his tribulations, his um, all the trauma that he went through. So there's something about um, having the specific person who wrote it also be the voice of it. So I told my client, I was like, I actually think there's a disconnect if your person were, was listening to me versus actually hearing you knowing that you wrote it. So given that perspective, she's like, you know what, I think I will record it. So, you know, I, I was able to give her that perspective and, and it was very valuable to her. Okay, so let's talk about some unreasonable expectations. 
So VAs are not a magic bullet. We can't solve all your problems. We can't do everything for you. Um, so it's important to have realistic expectations and what we can and can't do. I don't code. Don't ask me to code. When you're hiring your virtual assistant, you will um, you know, ask the correct questions and make sure that you've got the correct person for the task at hand. Uh, so VAs are also not your employees. We are independent contractors and you should treat them with respect. And you should also provide clear instructions and feedback. So I personally thrive on feedback and um, it allows me to gauge my work and then be able to being, and I'm able to adjust the sales appropriately. Um, and virtual assistants are not available 24 seven. I wish I could be available 24 seven to all my clients, but due to help my client workload, um, you know, I gotta, I have to have um, a schedule and, um, you know, I have my own life and uh, you should respect a VA's time. All right, let's talk about truth number two. All right, truth number two, timing is everything. So hiring a virtual assistant to, or it's like the three bears. You guys know the story of the Goldilocks and the three bears, the hot porridge, the, the cold porridge, and the one that's right in the middle. That's that's kind of how it is hiring a virtual assistant. Hiring a VA too early can be a waste of your resources if you're not generating enough income to uh, to cover the cost of a VA. Um, it's best to wait till your your business is a little more established before you make that investment. Now, hiring a virtual assistant too late can stunt your growth. So if you're feeling overwhelmed or overworked, it'll lead to like burnout. And then, um, yeah, if you just wait too long, you just have missed opportunities. So that's when you need to start delegating tasks to a VA. So the perfect time to hire a virtual assistant is, um, well, only you know that, but being able to delegate your tasks um, effectively and, and efficiently allows you to free up time um, in your business. So with, uh, with Townsend here, he, um, he's he got this community, right? There's probably about 100 people in his two containers. And I would say with all the homework that gets sent to him and managing who's not coming to the next session, you know, he, he said something to his wife, Louisa, and she's like, you need to pass that along to Jamie. Like, why are you handling all of this? And, you know, so Townsend came to me and um we talked about what agreements that we would have if, if I were to take on this project, which I absolutely love this project that we do. And I get to do this, you know, every week. It's fabulous. So me being able to take this on for Townsend, um, that creates some white space for you to breathe, right? Townsend, like that takes all that extra stuff off your plate. That's soul sucking stuff. And it allows you to just breathe. And you you have fun on these every week, right? Like, these are fun for me. These are fun for everybody. So that's um, that's the right time to hire. All right, let's go to number three, guys. Oh, boy. So hiring will take longer than you think, maybe even five times longer than you think. So depending on the complexity of your job requirement, if you're looking for a VA with specialized skills, uh, or experience, it might it might take a little longer to find that candidate. It also depends on um, the size of your candidate pool. If you've got like 15 candidates, um, it's going to take a little bit longer to review the applications as well as um, conduct the interviews. And of course, the hiring process. If you have a multi-stage hiring process, it'll take longer to complete. For instance, like if you have the first interview with the candidate and then you have like your manager or um, whoever else that might be part of the hiring process that takes scheduling and emailing. And so that you got to factor all of that in. All right. Um, truth number four. OK, so truth number four is that you're not hiring forever. You're going to want to treat hiring a VA like a project, like a, like a single project, which it allows you to test the waters. Hiring a VA for a project, it's a great way to see how well that they work within your company 
and um, it'll give you a chance to assess the VA's skills and um, and their experience, as well as your own communication style and uh, preferences. So m many of my clients just hire me for a single project. I love a single project that allows me to focus all of my energy on that one thing. And then I'll come back to my my <clears throat> my client with different options. You know, for example, if I'm if I'm editing like their website or something like that, I'm like, this is what I created, but I also created this. What do you think about this? Oh, should we maybe we can merge these two things together and you know, and then we co-create co something beautiful. So I love I love one-off projects. Those are fun. Um, let's see. Hiring um, as a one-off project actually reduces the risk. It's better than hiring a full-time employee because you only have to pay the VA for the hours that they worked um, on the specific project. <clears throat> I, uh, I had a project from a client that it was like the end of the year and he wanted me to write thank you cards for every client that they hired him for. It was like 50 or 60 clients. And this thank you card was, it was like two paragraphs, right? For for each client, for each thank you card. It probably took 30 minutes per card because, well, I'm left-handed. So if anybody knows left-handers, we smear right across. <laughs> so I, I couldn't just write, right? You know, I had to wait for the ink to dry or get creative. Um, so it took me, it, it, it took me almost 20 hours to get these thank you cards out. And what he paid me for those 20 hours, I, I kind of feel like, he could have used his time a little bit better. So with that, it was like a one and done project. And he realized that maybe a VA was not for him. I got the thank you cards out at a beautiful timing. Um, he got some really good feedback from his clients, but yeah, I, I think that was not the best use of my time. All right, guys, let's move on to five here. Truth number five, managing others is something that you will learn over time and you will probably suck at it. So this is my number one thing, clear communication. Communication is the number one. It's like paramount between your VA and yourself. If you guys don't have clear communication, it's just not going to work. Um, so setting clear expectations. Uh, when you're first assigning a task to a VA, be clear about your expectations, which includes the scope of the work, uh, the deadline and the desired outcomes. So some of my clients create to-do lists for me. It pops up in my little notifications and um, I can clearly see everything that they request of me. And then that allows me to figure out my time on my schedule to be able to get this task completed efficiently and on time. All right, so um, it's also good to provide training and support. So even if your VA has the skills that you hired them for, um, it's still important to provide training and support and it helps us to get get the scope, excuse me, get up to speed effectively and um, quickly. Some of my clients will just do a little quick little Zoom meeting so that we can get like the message across. Um, but also I have clients that have created Loom videos. Have you guys heard of Loom? It's like a little five minute re video recording of your screen. So um, if a client sends me a Loom video, I have the access to that video anytime I want. I can go back and listen and then they only had to record it once. So that's one of my favorite ways to uh, to receive training and support. All right. And ooh, delegate effectively. So this means providing uh, your VA with all the information that they would need to complete a task successfully. Um, and you got to make sure that the tasks are appropriate for the VA's skill level. So if if they're too complex or specialized, like don't don't delegate that. So on on the same line of thank you cards, I have a client who I have I write thank you cards for them, and it's very simple. It's to the point. It I, I send the thank you card along with whatever onboarding gift, and um, that is probably the best way to use as far as like a thank you card and handwritten, as long as it's simple, you know, that's a great way. It takes it off of the entrepreneur's plate and it's something that I can handle for them. Um, 
yeah, I think that's uh, that's it, guys. <laughs> oh, that's, I would... that's awesome. Yeah, Thank you, thanks. Jamie. Let me stop sharing here. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and kill the share. And then what we can do is we can we got we got Joe shirtless applauding. I like that. Um, we're gonna do questions, right? So Jamie could probably talk for three hours about what you need to think about to hire your first virtual assistant. I asked her to kind of slot it down to 15, 20 minutes. The rest of this really is uh about Q and A. What do you want to know specifically that Jamie could be of support with. So throw up your hands. If, 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 if people don't have questions, I've got, Oh, good. We got the hands already. Um, I've got some other questions that I thought about and also some people emailed me some, so we'll, we'll do it that way. Let me, oh boy. I'm not as skilled as Jamie at navigating this stuff here. <laughs> okay. Niels, we're going to start with you. What's your question? Hey, Jamie, thanks for doing this. So I have some experience with uh, VAs. And now I feel I, okay, so how to decide when to engage with another one where I feel like I'm super, I'm kind of like too small for the tasks. I have one task that's like completely uh, delegatable, if that's a thing, but mm -hmm. others yeah. aren't so much. And then I feel stuck between, yeah, by the time I get it explained, I probably have done it already. And then it's like, I never <laughs> do it. And yeah, because I feel too small. And then I heard, this podcast from Tim Ferriss, where I think this guy is Tom, Sam Costco. He said he started using like 10 years ago or 12 years ago. And he really was like, I don't even know what to delegate it uh, to, to, to them. But that was the task that he delegated. And then they figured it out themselves. And to me, it was like, wow, can I even use them for that? But then surely they created a new relationship and then it became pretty clear what they could use them for and what what not to and i thought oh that i would have thought that would would be a waste of money actually but well what do you what are your thoughts about that maybe there's two um, questions one but yeah i was like which when uh, to decide yeah when to decide um well it if if you find that that you're literally just you're just at your wits end with with stuff, but they, they you find them to be too small. You know, just write write them down on the list. Write a list of the things that right. if if they weren't on your plate, like what could you do better with your time to get you back into your zone of genius? That's usually the first thing that I if if I'm doing like a discovery call, like come back to me in a week, write down a list like throughout the oh, week. Oh yeah, I have that list for sure. Yeah, you have that list? Yeah, no problem. And then it's like, <laughs> okay this person is specialized in that if i go on fiverr that one does this yeah. well but i need all of that it's like and then the time to engage with all of them on fiverr becomes another task and i'm like yeah. right yeah. yeah fiverr is um i mean yeah it, it's like the all in one like people will post themselves up there right it's like um right you can find yeah. someone like in malaysia for five dollars you can find someone in, in america for like a hundred bucks and it's just it's like a wide range right Right. I mean, I would I would go on Indeed or or source someone from like LinkedIn or something and try to find your unicorn there. I've, that's mm. what I've been told that I am. I'm I am a unicorn because I'm I'm yeah. learning a lot a bunch of different tasks and I'm adapting with my clients. Most yeah. of my clients are ongoing monthly basis, and that's what they that's what they were looking for. But I know that this this specific presentation was hire them for like a single task. So you have VAs then, and but. Sometimes well, it was just want. a challenge to build a longer term relationship with them, right. which actually was my intention. Right. But they went off to other directions and like, oh, damn, I, I put so much yeah. energy in that relationship. And then they were like, yeah, it's just a project for me. And uh, and yeah, it's yeah. they're right. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're sourcing correctly, you know, just you want to make sure that like we're, we're looking to hire for the long run, then make sure that yeah. you're, you're doing that. I don't know if you'll find that on Fiverr. You know. I, I want to jump in and add something here. Yeah. And, and one, one of the distinctions that I think Jamie is so close to that it's obvious to her and maybe not to everybody else is what you're going to find on Fiverr, there are people that say I'm a virtual assistant. Those are people you can give tasks to, right? Yeah. To me, there's a fundamental difference between somebody that can offload a task, either one time or recurring, and someone who is truly going to be a virtual assistant. Yeah. Right? 
somebody with yeah. a task, you need to let them know what they're going to do and how to do it, how often, how many times, and all the specifics. What Jamie alluded to in one of her stories that I heard was somebody like a Jamie, like a true virtual assistant that's going to be a partner in your business is not just somebody you're going to hand something to and say, go do it. There's somebody you're going to have a dialogue with about, is it even worth doing? Right. Yeah, exactly. One of the things that Jamie and, 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 you know, she's not the only person that does this, but a real virtual assistant is not somebody who's just, oh, I can, I have these sets of skills. It's somebody who understands the business and, and will find things to do for you. Yeah. So, or ideally it tells you, well, that's not a good idea. I have a better idea. Yeah. But the yeah. thing is how to get there, like in terms of relationship and you know, yep. also even find them. Yep. Yep. Well, before we get to the end of this, I'm going to share about something that Jamie is going to be offering, which is more of a workshop, right? We only have a little bit of time here, but it is a workshop that walks through the steps to do just that. So I'll talk about that at the end. Um, what's important for now is there is a distinction between the two. So thanks. Yeah. Thanks for your question, Niels. Thanks. Fiona, what's your question? It's the similar line, really. Um, hi, Jamie. Hi, Townsend. Uh -huh. Hi, everybody. It's very similar to what to what Niels was saying. And I've I've also dabbled in virtual assistants Oops. for tasks. And I think I think what I wanted to create with the virtual assistants that I've had is is a, is this two way street. And I found that they tended to be just task orientated. Uh, and I wanted, you know, I'd be like, well, what? I, I don't know what I don't know. I'm not, a, I, I'm a coach, right? I don't, I'm not kind of running, I am running a business, but I'm learning that bit as I go. And what I wanted from a virtual assistant was somebody who would be proactive in saying, you know what, if we were to do this, you could save that much time, that much money, that whatever, or it would make your business more effective. And I never found anyone. They were always reactive rather than proactive. And I kind of, kind of came away from it thinking, well, is that is that my mistake? Am I actually looking for a business manager? And I just wondered what, I'm not quite sure what the role of a virtual assistant is. And I put in the chat, I'd love a checklist of what a VA can offer and how that would benefit my practice. Yeah, a VA is is like I said earlier. It, it, it we are unicorns. We try to do everything and specialize in a few things, and we're constantly learning and improving our skills. And um, for me, uh, when when JP hired me, they were looking for a long term you know solution to really help Kara. Kara is uh, JP's. Um, She's the director of his company. Yeah. So she was doing all the things that I'm doing and then other things on directing the company. And so when they hired me, they they made sure to say right off the bat that we're looking for a, a longer term uh, relationship with you. And so mm -hmm. when you have that communication right off the bat, I think that might might be the key that you're looking for. I mean, did, did you say that explicitly to your yeah. VA? The, well, the the cup. I've had a couple, um, and one of them I still I still kind of work with on certain things. Um, she's she kind of sorts out various systems, but not very much. And I think the other thing, the first one was I wanted to get a blog out, and I really didn't know how to upload it. I could write it, didn't yeah. know how to okay. upload it. But it used to cost me like sixty quid a blog because by the time she'd fiddled about with it and made it pretty and done whatever she did. And then uploaded it onto my website. It was like, well, it'd probably be quicker, you know, if I had just learned how to do the uploading it, I could do that myself, and it it would be. Sounds cheap. like you might need some some better SOPs then. Like you can even have like a template, a standard operating procedure. Like you can maybe have a template for your VA to upload it to, and that way all they're doing is copy and pasting versus trying to make it pretty every single time. Yeah, well, we like did that, we know? did create one of those, but it's yeah. still me <laughs> so, <laughs> um i mean for me it takes me less than 15 minutes to upload things for for jp like yeah. it's we, we really got it dialed in and that's all you got to do you just got to really dial it in for yeah i mean i think that's you know one of the things i'll share is i'll use the analogy if if, if you're looking to get married you probably shouldn't be going to a bar or a nightclub to 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 search 
there's there's something that applies here, right? A lot of people think a virtual assistant is, well, I'll go on Fiverr or Upwork. You know, and, these were both LinkedIn girls. Yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. So then so then it comes to a mass matter of the hiring process and the scoping process, right? A lot of people don't have experience. You, know, you probably haven't hired hundreds of employees in your life, right? No. Yeah. So that that is part of the challenge is getting really clear on what do you ask for? What do you look for? How do you start this stuff? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of method to the madness. Um, mm. As you indicated, uh, Jamie works for JP. He has a director who's responsible for hiring multiple Jamies, right? Um, one of the things Jamie is going to is going to teach in this workshop is here's a system for doing this, right? Because most most coaches don't have that. They don't know what they don't know. Yeah, and that's that's kind of the yeah. system where I'm at. It's like. What, what, one suggestion I have is, I know you say, what could VAs do? What I do is I look at my entire business and I keep track of everything that I do, whatever I spend time on. And mm -hmm. I ask, can I find somebody to do that for me? All right. So I flip it around and I try to create a value for that activity, right? Closing a client. Well, look, I'm the only person in the world can do that. You're right. Mo moderating a Zoom chat, anybody can do that. And there's lots of things that Jamie does that are above that, right? Mm. But it really starts with getting clear on what are all the things you spend your time on in a week, right? And then yeah. even something like a blog. Well, there's the writing it, there's the editing it, there's the formatting it, and then there's the posting it. Well, which of those do you have to do? And which of those could somebody else do? So even activities themselves can be parsed out. Broken down. Yeah. yeah and, I, and I think in fairness, I probably wasn't as, well, I wasn't as far along in my business as I am now when I last looked yeah. at this. Yeah. You know, a lot more about my own business. That's right. You do. You do. Yeah. yeah. So cool. I probably would be of, a lot of it is, is letting go. Letting yeah. go of control <laughs> and trusting the process. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Fiona. Dubam, you're next. Yeah, it's funny that that last thing you just said, Jamie, because that letting go of control, I know that's something that I, I that struggle with. Um, and well, first of all, thank you for um, for this 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 talk, this presentation. It's been very uh, enlightening. When you first yeah put it out there or Townsend put it out there a few weeks ago I was like oh I'm not at that stage yet you know what I mean I don't think but actually I'm like I've got clients there's things actually happening and I have a you know a broader vision of of you know a, what I would like to create in terms of community and 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 online you know things so the question is regards to that um, long-term relationship aspect you know you guys have talked about and and speaking to a virtual assistant um about the long term vision and and I'm curious like in having that conversation at this stage where I haven't actually necessarily created an online group program right but like mm -hmm. I have the people there like I have the things there like the things are happening where that that could happen mm -hmm. um that yeah the ways in which you know can you have that conversation in the beginning because I don't I don't think it would be I'm kind of in that middle west I don't think it would be financially prudent to to invest in a virtual assistant right now mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think for a certain amount of money but at the same time working with one could actually accelerate the potential you know revenue like and, and I'm talking about very very um quickly so is that something that is that a conversation virtual assistants are interested in in having? I have, I actually have a couple of people like in mind who I've just met through my, you know, connections and networks. Uh, mm -hmm. And definitely one of them, I'm like, we we have a great, you know, she's a friend. You know what I mean? Like, I, I there's a great synergy there already. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm always wary about like, hey, I don't just want to say like, hey, come and do this stuff for free because I'm not about that either. But then I'm also like, hey, but there is like trust me, there's a big vision. Like, and if you was on the team, like we could really get stuff like cracking, you know? 
Right. So, uh, there's a question in there. Let me that. <laughs> the que was the question, um, let me see if I heard this right. Are, are virtual assistants interested in, in, in helping you with creating your online community? Did I? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, I guess it just depends on the virtual assistant. I loved the idea of helping Townsend out in, 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 managing his community i didn't create it by any means I, I i don't really have visions like that um but i mean if you're the vision and you want someone to help you create that i i definitely think there's a virtual assistant out there for you you just ha got to have that conversation with them you said you already have someone in mind yeah I your friend yeah 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 talk numbers baby make that happen if you already have someone that you trust yeah is she if a I said like, yes yeah, she's a virtual assistant yeah, yeah. I just, I was just literally, that's on my phone. I was just Googling her now. Yeah. <laughs> so let and me go look at her website. I mean, like... most of my, my clients have been word of mouth. I haven't, I have not reached out to anyone. They've been like, oh, I have someone. Let me give you Jamie's number. So if you already have someone that you trust, I would, I would pull that thread. Definitely mm. talk, talk to that person. And maybe you guys will create a beautiful relationship together and then you guys can, you know, blossom your your business i i'm not i mean i love i love building my business but i love amplifying other businesses that's my zone of genius is amplifying others voices and their businesses so i like being in the background so me being in front of you guys is slightly out of uh <laughs> out of my scope but um i'm leaning into the uncomfortableness just so you guys know um and, it, and it's yeah. a lot of fun and I'm a little jittery and, you know, you guys are giving me a lot of life right now. So I say lean into that, do them, lean into that one person and, and see, and maybe they might know someone if they're not mm. the right person and look mm. for maybe like references from that person. Mm. No, that's great. Here's that's the great. thought I have, do them, and that is you're going to need support at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the ability for somebody to support you is going to rely far more on the relationship than anything else. Somebody else, I think it was Michael in here put, um, it, uh, sorry, it was Niels. He shared what he learned from another podcast, hire for integrity, intelligence, initiative. Mm -hmm. Jamie can learn anything, right? There's nothing I can't say, well, go figure this out. That might cost more time and money, but that's the decision of, of do I want to spend the money on it? But there's nothing that Jamie can't figure out how to do. So it's not a capability issue. It's a relationship issue, right? I trust Jamie. I've built a relationship with her. I know her very well. I trust her to tell me I can do that. Here's how long it'll take. Or uh, that's not something I want to do. I trust her for that. The only way you get to that level is by working with people. So the sooner you can start finding projects to try, right? Mm. My personal view is don't go looking for a virtual assistant just yet. Find a project that you're going to have somebody else do that's lower risk, lower cost to learn about working with somebody else. Cause that's the hardest part. The hardest part for me, and I've known Jamie for years is to go, okay, Jamie, do this. I waited about six months too long to say, be my community manager, at least six months. <laughs> and I know her, that's me. It's all in my head. Mm. So Make it a goal, make it uh, an initiative. I'm going to do something with an executive assistant, also an assistant in Q1. I'll find something. Yeah. And then you'll learn about how that works. Yeah. Don't wait until like you've got it all figured out because your chances of finding the right person on the first try, you'll probably go through a few. That's, that's, um, no, that's, that's, that's awesome. Cause it, it cool. just really took it to like, yeah. Just experiment yeah. and try something out, and you're gonna learn yeah. in real time, like actually working yeah. together. Like if you're like, I want, I've never tried sushi. Like I'm gonna go try sushi. You're not trying to find the perfect. Just, just get in some restaurant and try it out. Michael, I'm gonna have you come in next. Thank you. Yeah, Townsend, uh, thanks very much for this. This is great, and Jamie, uh, I, I love the conversation. Okay. Um, I, I'm just following on on Dubem's uh, uh, coattails on this. Uh, I, I think he brought up a really good point, and just to extend it a little, it's it's to call out the obvious here. We're we're coaches, and we absolutely love coaching. <laughs> the rest of it is just you know this high energy, low energy. 
it's just on the other side of the of the of the line, particularly for me. Uh, the energy levels drop when 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 I have to do some of this. Um, so so just playing. Sorry. It's soul sucking. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks yeah. your soul out. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so, you know, I, I'm looking at it from two sides. I'm looking at it from some of my client sides that scale in businesses already, and and I'm seeing you know potential opportunities. Uh, I think I first came across it with uh, Rich Liff and um, the idea of a is a, a, a business manager type uh, uh, scenario. And I think we've you, you know we've discussed it here, um, where somebody coordinates all the, the the virtual assistants and that's a great idea but to take it one step further it'd be lovely if somebody came in and and i was to reach out to that person and they organized the perfect assistant for me in terms of a project that i have or something like that because there's an awful lot of work especially when you haven't gone through it before it's an awful lot of work to find somebody that that you can link up with and and be successful early on or quickly um mm. and you know so I, I i feel particularly for myself that's where some of my energy or some of my opportunity is lost and and just where dubam uh, mentioned about you know i feel that i i could take my business to a new level if i had if i had the right energy alongside me because i feel i'm a i'm a quick start but my follow through is is crap if I could use that word, and yeah. I'm losing opportunity as a result. So I, I think it was you, Tanzan. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you you had an article recently where you mentioned about um, you know you you could have a great idea today, something, and you write it down and capture it, and it's yeah. it's you know it's at the fore today, and it's very very important. Tomorrow, ah, what the hell? You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that that's my energy, and I think people like us are potentially losing opportunities. Yep, I'm sure. Um, to link up with the likes of virtual assistants and and you know, so I'm I'm playing with that whole thing. So look, I, I'm not sure whether there's a question in that or not, but I, it's a great conversation. Yeah. Well, thank you, Michael. Just hearing just hearing you, it it sounds like you were interested in a in a business manager to handle all the little tasks of a virtual assistant. Maybe that's what you're. I've been called a business manager <laughs> by one of my clients, and I introduced myself as such when. She, she asks me to. Um, I like I said, we're unicorns. We can do a little bit of everything. I love that um, word, Jamie. Unicorn. Yeah, yeah. A unicorn? Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Right. One, one, <laughs> one of the things I'm trying to talk Jamie into is offering a service to help coaches create and then find their executive assistant. That that's exactly what my point is going to. Yes, yep. 100%, good. Well, in stay, one sentence, stay, yeah, or stay, less. Stay, stay tuned. <laughs> Daryl, thanks, th thanks, Michael. Daryl, you're next. Jamie Townsend, thanks for this. Uh, I have a very simple, practical question. Um, two sided. One, Jamie, do you only work with coaches? And two, how important is it to, in your opinion, to find a virtual assistant experienced in working with coaches versus working with people in other industries? Mm, that is a great question. Um, I don't exclusively work with coaches. I have one client who um, who's in construction and he is not sure how he wants to use me, but he, he pays me to yell at him. He <laughs> wants to stay on task and he I, I get his emails and I say, you need to answer this and you need to answer that. Don't forget to pay that. Oh, you want me to pay it? Okay, I'll pay that for you. Like he, he does, he hates all of that kind of administrative stuff. Um, I don't do anything else. I, I I have done some social media for him, but he's like, I don't even need my social media. So you can stop that now. He doesn't really know how to use me, but he wants to keep me on, right? He's in construction. He needs a roofer or something like that. Everyone else though is, um, is a coach. And to answer the second part of your question, um, when I was hired with uh, JP Morgan, I had told him that I had, had some professional coaching. I had gone through Landmark and I had one or two other coaches before or after Landmark. And they said that it was important for them to know that my being was primary. So I know that a lot of coaches, like that's that's where you start, right? And, and if you have a virtual assistant that is really not with you on that, it's not really going to be like the best partnership. So I love working with coaches because I understand coach lingo and whatnot so 
personally, I love it. I love coaches. Did that answer your question? Thanks. Thanks for the question, Daryl. Yeah, yeah, answer beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Mr. Creel, you're up next. Uh, I don't have a question. I just want to say I would never have thought this was the first time and you felt uncomfortable. You seem to be a oh. natural. You're <laughs> answering the questions. I just want to give you uh, give you some love in public oh. that I think you're doing a great job and I don't have thank any questions. Thank you. Well, I will. Uh, thank you so much for that acknowledgement. I, I um, receive your words 100%. I, I was in um, restaurant business industry for 15 years. So my soft skills are like right on point. I'm really good at talking with people. Yeah. <laughs> can you guys tell? Small talk, weather, I can I can handle it all. But um, yeah, my, my zone of genius is apparently behind the scenes now instead of making cocktails and, you know, flipping shit in the air. So <laughs> thank you for your um, acknowledgement, David. Appreciate it. Thanks, you. David. Ian. Jamie, thank you so much. This is awesome. Hey, thanks for being here. <laughs> um, my question for you is, what guidance or advice would you give when it comes to setting a VA up for success with larger, unstructured research, maybe research might be one example, oriented tasks as differentiated from here's the daily thing, here's the cut and dry SOP. Like what, what would you have me keep in mind when setting a VA up for success with that kind of more creative and generative sort of task? That's a really good question and a lot to yeah. think about. Um, I do both. So I have my I have my SOP tasks and I have research, research, research. Um, I think a, a good a good um, rule is set a set of time limit on research because I could re research for hours yeah. and hours sure. like, hey, just yep. just make that clear. Like if, if it's going to take longer than 30 minutes, let's, I think I can hear some feedback here, guys. Sorry. Um, if it's going to take longer than 30 minutes, just can it, you know, you set those, um, uh, not an expectation. It's an, uh, um, acknowledgement. Um, what is it? Calvin? Not expectation. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm thinking like a, a agreement, a, set your agreement. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Yep. Set an agreement that they will only research for this amount of time. Um, and then come back to you with what they find, right? So that's, I think it's, it always comes down to clear communication and getting clear on what you want, always. That is like paramount for having yeah. that relationship with your VA, right? With I, any, I would with also, any relationship. I, yeah, I, I would I'd be very clear in what, not, not, not just the outcome itself, but what you're going to do with it, right? So many times you set people about a task to research if it's not connected to what you're using it for, if there's not an understanding of why they're doing it, research can be a black hole. Um, I had an assistant years ago and what I had them do, I wanted to uh, source some gifts for people that had been referral partners of mine, like holiday gifts. I want to send them something nice. And what I said was, I want you to, I want you to see what you can find about them, their interests and what I want you to do is find a gift that is, you know, around two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, which is kind of my max, but I'm willing to go over it. And I want it to be something that they see, use, or experience on a regular basis. I want them to think of me regularly. So that was the only parameter. And given that, she had a whole lot of fun. One of my clients, she found out from stalking him on Facebook, he uh, he liked old Porsches. We got him a gas cap. A custom two hundred and fifty dollar Porsche gas cap that replaced the factory stock. Every time to this day, he fills up with gas and he thinks of me. So, if you're very clear on what's this for, right? What's the impact you want it to have? Then you know, with the right partner, they can go go hog wild. We'll do I one more. I'm definitely ready for that. Yeah, you way. want that? You're okay, ready. Cool. Yeah, I'm ready to do that <laughs> research. That is so much fun. That is in my zone of genius, you guys. <laughs> maybe, maybe that we'll lit shaken. me the fuck up like yeah, right? doing something like that so you just yeah find find someone that gets lit up by that <laughs> right on thanks ian awesome thank you shane what's your question brother you're on mute yeah i'm mute myself so my question is um i i my question is how do you retain a va without overwhelming them and I'll, I'll add a bit of context to, context to that. I hired one literally last week uh, from LinkedIn. 
uh, taught her everything I knew in terms of building my podcast, the content, the social media stuff. And she learned it all and then took it and basically now is running her own podcast production little thing. So I'm I'm a person who's very open. I'm very transparent. I'm very, um, I want to provide as much information as possible so that they have all the tools that they can, that they need to do what they need to do. But in the sense of giving too much or what I felt was too much, I feel like I've been betrayed or paid the consequences of that now um, by her taking the model and then going off and doing her own thing. So um, what, what what would be your your view on that, if, if I may that ask? Is, that's crazy. Uh, I'm sorry that that happened to you. Um, <laughs> I personally have signed NDAs. I have um, people have created agreements with me that this is their intellectual property. And if you need to write that down somewhere and have them sign it, you know, really cover your ass if it's something that something that crazy that happened. Mm. Uh, wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, all, yeah. it's all right. It's all right. But I, <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've got two thoughts. One is don't make the first project with your virtual assistant, the crown jewel. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you really right? That's, that's number no one. one. <laughs> don't, you'll, ne you'll never do that again. No. Right? Maybe start with, you know, stamping envelopes or something before, Hey, let me tell you my trade secrets. Like get to know somebody first, Shane. <laughs> Here's the second one. Never teach anything twice and here's what i mean if i'm going to hire a virtual assistant for anything their number one job is to document whatever i'm teaching them to do so if they quit i fire them or they get hit by a bus i've got something for somebody else your first job i'm, I'm not going to hire somebody who doesn't create standard operating procedures okay. because what i'm not going to do is spend an hour or 10 hours teaching somebody and then have to do it again three more times this year everyone write that one down Everybody. write that down if you don't have a standard operating procedure to hand, somebody you hire after they've signed an NDA or whatever, you trust them, then that's job one. We're building an SOP for something. That's job number one. I agree. And then just to attest to what you said, uh, Jamie, with um, people saying, I, 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 I'm, I've, I've thought of hiring on Fiverr or I've thought of hiring on freelancers.com. Anytime I've hired on any one of those websites, I've had to do it three to four times. But whenever I've spoken to an English speaking candidate, such as Jamie or uh, Smart PA, which is another one that I used in the UK, um, the results and the help and assistant was phenomenal because they just mm -hmm. understood everything, how it worked. And they were able to kind of say, this is how you should do it. Or Shane, would you like your inbox like this? Would you like me to organize it like this? And yep. then understanding where those VAs can leverage their abilities within your role or within your operation, um, it only makes the, the the overall task much easier. So uh, again, thank you very much, Jamie, for sharing that and Townsend yeah. for the uh, two yeah. new procedures. Yeah, Thanks thank for you guys. Question, Shane. Um, I'm going to share with you what Jamie is up to. I'm going to try to anyway, if I can get this to work um so i've asked her as part of this right to put together something that she could do to assist you guys if you're interested right so as we've talked about the number one challenge to hiring a virtual assistant is most just haven't done it you don't know what you don't know you're gonna make mistakes what you want is for the mistakes to be less costly uh Jamie has been a virtual assistant. She also has partnered closely with my wife, Louisa, who was formerly the director of uh, HR recruiting for the largest employer in Colorado, Air Electronics. And Jamie and Louisa worked very closely together in hiring projects for a bunch of Louisa's clients. So Jamie has a lot of knowledge of how does one go about setting yourself up for success to hire. So She's going to be launching in January her first version of what we're tentatively calling Scaling You. It's going to be a, a program that focuses on helping you guys get what you need to hire a virtual assistant. This is, at least from a vision standpoint, the first of two modules. This can take you all the way from figuring out what you want, designing a job posting. Most people don't know how to design a job post. You think it's just the features and functionalities or the, or the specs. 
you're not going to get a lot of applicants. How are you going to track and manage the screening process? How do you interview? Exactly. How do you interview? And then ultimately, how do you present an offer and contract different ways to do that? So it's going to be a six week program to do these things. It's not going to take you past the point of the hire. That'll be a, a future program, right? How do you ramp them? How do you manage performance? How do you expand the role? How do you terminate if you need to? So this first module is just get you started so you can begin the hiring process. You'll be able to leave it with everything you have or everything you need to go out and start sourcing and talking to candidates. That would be valuable. Um, it's going to be small, no more than 10 participants, six sessions, 60 minutes each. Thursdays at 11 central is the time. And I'll put this in an email for you guys if you, if you miss anything. Um, here are the dates. It's going to be 500 bucks. So if you're thinking about Hiring an executive assistant in 2024, this is a no-brainer to do. So this isn't supposed to be a big uh, home shopping network pitch session, so I'm not going to say much more, but I didn't want this just to be a bunch of information and you guys still spin around trying to figure out, okay, now what do I do? Here's something you can do. You will be set up to hire somebody and start hiring and then it working out or not working out. That's how you're going to learn. So we'll be sending out some information about that. If you have the desire to do so, email Jamie directly. Say, I want in Jamie at zoneofgeniusva.com. Yeah, zoneofgeniusva.com. We got a couple minutes left. Anybody else have a question here? If not, I had one emailed to me that I want to share. So anybody here have a question? One of the questions that somebody emailed was, what's the best way to handle and manage working with a virtual assistant who's in a very different time zone? How does that work? Ooh, that's actually a really good question as I do work with people from all over the world. So yeah, time zone differences can be tricky. Um, so the best thing to do is identify overlapping work hours. So um, for, existent, for example, I work with uh, someone who's in London and that is a six, five, six hour time difference. So we figure out um, when their working hours are versus and, and mine and where we are definitely going to be able to communicate. Uh, Worldtimebuddy.com is excellent in um, <laughs> figuring that out for you. You don't have to even figure it out. But yeah, when you when you find the common work hours between your time zones, then you can schedule meetings, calls, and discuss things. Um, also, uh, you know, you got to set clear expectations for communication response time. So yeah. if if your availability is a certain time frame, then you want to let them know, like, I'm only going to be responding during these time frames, and hopefully it's in that overlapping hours that you guys are both working. Um, I also utilize communication channels. So email, Slack, project management platforms like Asana or um, yeah. Monday. Um, I love Voxer because Voxer, you can send the voice note. Voice snippets, yeah. Yeah, that's the best one. Um, and then you can check it whenever you have the time. Or if you have it on, it'll just play and you can hear the voice note right away. And you're like, oh, I want to respond to that. Yeah. Something like that. Cool. So um, I think once you once you figure out the 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 common work hours and you also want to establish like hey if certain things aren't uh, as time sensitive give the va a day ahead so you know give them the task and then say it's due in two days and that way it gives an extra day to work out anything that might be um, miscommunicated or if there's any snags yeah. Um, also, right, I, I got, I got yeah, one more go question. I got one more question. It's important. To, I can't believe nobody asked this. <laughs> okay. What's it going to cost? Not not you particularly, but if somebody's going to go out and start working with a virtual assistant, what should they plan to be investing hourly? And I know there's going to be a range, so maybe give you the range. And then, like, what's the minimum amount that's even going to make it worthwhile for somebody? Right? If somebody's going to put their toe in the water, what are they? What are, what are they going to have to spend? Um, well, depending on the uh, the VA's um, experience, you know, when I first started, I started off at, you know, $20 an hour and I did a 10 hour retainer fee. So I would send them an invoice um, for those 10 hours. And but, you know, what, as I 
started going along, you know, I, I'm at $50 an hour and I've actually quoted somebody $70 an hour. And so again, I just send the invoice of the 10 hours. And as I'm working, they get to see the spreadsheet of all the things that I've done. I record my time in 15 minute intervals. So they can see that I've done three hours and 15 minutes on this specific task. And it's like real time. They can see what I've done. Um, as I get down to like, as, as I've already worked, like maybe eight hours, I shoot them an email, say, Hey, we have two hours left. Are you interested in me sending another 10, 10 hour invoice? Something like that. I do have a lot of clients that are billed monthly, though. We've already had that communication of um, an agreement that I build them at the end of the month because we have ongoing projects every month. So it just really depends on how you communicate that with your VA yeah. and what their um, billing structure is. Is it safe to say that the more sort of transactional doing process driven the task you can find somebody for less and the more thinking designing mm. developing collaborating it's going to cost more i think you hit the nail on the head townsend <laughs> cool good yeah all right we're at the top of the hour jamie thank you so much for mm. sharing all this thank i'll be you. sending out an email with the recording and also uh, a reminder about what jamie's going to be running next year if if you guys have a desire to do that you reach out to her and and have a conversation i'm also going to be posting the recording in the coaches operating system, the coachesos.com uh, new community home. If you haven't joined that yet, please do. Uh, any, anybody who's part of the business accelerator has to be part of that. Anybody else, you're, you're welcome to join. There's a whole community and public area. This will be in the public area of the coachesos.com. That's where the replay will be posted. You'll have to go watch it there. Thanks, Jamie. Hey, thank you for this opportunity, Townsend. It was incredible. Thank you guys for being fun. here. Much appreciated. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.